you have a session that's titled uh, Web App Security Testing for Everyone. Right. What are the most common security risks for web apps? Well, um, the best place to look for that actually is uh, there's an organization called OWASP, uh, Open Web App Security Program. And they maintain a top 10 list for, of exactly that web app vulnerabilities. And uh, if you look at that, what you'll notice is year to year, they, they put them out every three years. And the things on the list don't really change. The order changes a little bit. And if you go look at that list, um, the number one is always injection, which means injecting a script or injecting uh, a database query to get access to something you shouldn't be able to. Um, and then uh, you see a lot of things just related to access controls, meaning, um, you know, and something I'll talk about later is uh, in my talk is, uh, you know, like you get a URL with a user ID in it, you change the user ID, you get someone else's information. And that's called direct object reference. And then the last one is just lack of encryption. Um, and, and encryption goes beyond just encrypting the data, like perhaps there's sensitive information flowing back and forth, but you also need to encrypt things like the authentication tokens that give access to that data, the passwords and things like that. So for me, those are sort of the, you know, uh, the, the big ones I see that do tend to line up with what what OWASP says as so well. So the, the items on the list always stay the same, they just change order? Typically, yeah, right. Is that bad? That's a bad thing, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so I often hear about the need to bake in security, and I yeah. think I understand what that means, but what does that actually look like in practice? Uh, I, I think to me what it means is think about security at the beginning. Yeah. And um, uh, there are a lot of well-known best practices for security. Uh, and you can refer to those and build it into your software development plan and into your testing plan. And I think what happens a lot of times is it gets left to the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've seen that, I've seen evidence of that when I look at websites, I've seen it even in my own experience where security, you know, you want to get it working. Right? You want to get it out there and working and then oh, at the end we have to secure it. And, and that won't bake it in because you need to, you need to be doing it from the beginning. Do you think that ties back to that initial thing we were talking about, where if it's bolted on at the end, of course you would see, continue to see the same things? Well, that's true. Right? I think that is true. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. You focus on educational technology? I do. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Are there significant differences uh, between ed tech and consumer tech? There are. I think um, you know, there's different kinds of consumer tech. Uh, like if you look at uh, payment card industry, um, they're protecting financials, they're protecting sure. money. And what happened uh, early on in the whole uh, like online uh, commerce was the banks were getting ripped off and they put a very rigid security spec in place and they told payment card websites, you know, websites that collect credit card payments, you, you can't use our credit card if you don't meet this rigorous mm -hmm. security spec. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a payment card uh, website, it's usually pretty solid. Uh, and then I think if you look at, um, other types of websites, there's not necessarily the financial risk, they're protecting information. So there's less of a direct financial cost to not having security. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, uh, a lot of the social media sites weren't encrypted. And, yes, uh, and there right. was some hubbub about that, and that was personal information. And then if you look at getting to education, education is still kind of at that earlier stage, I think. You see a lot of sites not encrypted, a lot of basic security practices not being done. And in terms of the technology, though, it's, it's, it is protecting not financially, it's not protecting financials, but it's protecting personal information and education records of kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're, you know, it's still worth protecting. And I think currently the, the, the maturity of the security, generally speaking, is, is behind some of the other. Is other it kinds. improving? I mean, are there gonna be catalysts it, that bring it up to the same it, level? It is improving. I think um, one thing that I think, another thing that's missing is if you, if you look at payment card industry, they have a specification, mm. right? Okay. Um, in, in the terms of educational technology, there are some laws that say reasonable security, but nobody knows what reasonable means. And so, um, and there's no, there's no you know, strong definition of that. And um, so without a spec, I think it's hard for developers to develop to no spec. It's hard for users to know what to expect with no spec. So that's, that's the big piece that's, that we need. And I think once we get that, I think people want to have good security in general. And there, you know, there are different reasons why they don't. But if we had a, a spec and we could all agree on this is what an educational site should be doing for these different types of data, then we can start moving towards it. Is there a spec forthcoming? Um, not, well, I'm working on one. But, okay. Uh, um, and honestly, my, the, the talk I'll be doing is kind of stems from that too, where I made a, based on my own experiences and the OWASP materials, I made a, an end user test. It's not a full spec, but it's something any end user can test. Okay. To at least get a, and, and everything on there is something that a site should be doing. Right. You know, um, so there are some efforts to do some things like this. Sure. Yeah. Switching gears a little bit. Yes. What is the biggest web or coding issue that you're encountering right now? Um, so 
for me, since I look mostly at the educational sites, what I see there is um, lack of encryption being a real big one, as I mentioned earlier, and just access control type stuff where, um, you know, a, 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 you can set up a teacher account and see all the kids in the school, even though you didn't have to confirm you were a teacher. Uh, uh, or some of these direct, these direct access things where with a, with a user ID, you can go get all sorts of information without having to be authenticated. Mm -hmm. So these sorts of things. Related to that, yeah. what was the big issue that you had five years ago? And has that been Encryption, addressed? I think. Uh, just th so that, that has come, I mean, so, so five years in general, there was less encryption. The, the social media kind of got, there was something called Firesheep that, mm -hmm. that automated it, right? And you go to Starbucks and see everybody on a social media site and what they're doing. Um, so that's gotten better there. And it is coming, I think that is coming in the educational technology kind of slowly, but people are starting to adopt that and understand that you have to encrypt everything. You have to encrypt even after it's logged in, not just the password, okay. things like that. Last question for you. What yes. people or projects are you following these days? So um, uh, in terms of uh, security and, uh, and like ed tech security, there's a blogger, uh, her, her blog is Jessie Soros, but her name is Jessie Irwin. Uh, and she does a lot of strong advocacy there. On privacy, there's a, a blog, Funny Monkey, by Bill Fitzgerald. Uh, and he's, he's focused a little more on like the, um, what do companies do with the data once they have it? And what do the privacy policies say? And how should these be better written? And how can they be more transparent? And then in terms of the press, um, there's a reporter I've worked with a lot, Natasha Singer at New York Times, who covers um, edu uh, technology and security related and privacy related stories. And she's like consistently writes really great stories that show sort of both sides of things. Um, and I think it is interesting we're at a time with all this new technology hitting new boundaries of privacy and security. And, uh, and it's not all worked out yet, what's sort of what the, what the proper handling of those should be. And what I like about her stories is she'll, uh, you know, she'll, she'll say, well, here are the concerns, but here's the benefits, sort of. So, right. um, and actually, one more I like to I read on Ars Technica, Dan Gooden is someone, he's just consistently writes really, I think, really interesting stories that are important to a lot of people. Great. Well, yeah. thank you for okay, being with us. Okay, thank you.